So I flipped the part over and I turned off translucent mode. And now we're going to do these pockets on the bottom side. So again, I'm going to go to my planes and I'm going to select the bottom tilted front plane so that I can work on this pocket. With my pointer all the way at the end of the list, I want to go to my tool pass and we'll select 2D high speed dynamic mill. We'll select our machining region. Now, of course, you could pick the top edge or the bottom edge. I'm going to grab the bottom edge of this pocket. So this is going to be a solid selection, and I'm going to be grabbing this as a loop. And I'll grab this right here. That's the face I want. We're going to say OK and OK again. We want to make sure we tell it to stay inside of that boundary, and we'll OK here. So for our tool, we're going to use the one inch flat end mill and we'll add a comment. And I'll say mill the bottom tilted front pocket. Take a look at our cut parameters. So we have a step over of 12%. That looks good. We have 50 thousandths on the walls and the floors. I think we're just going to cut this right to size. We're just going to use one tool and cut it to the finished dimensions. If you can cut a pocket, you can certainly cut a contour. So if you'd like to add those additional tool paths, that would be up to you. And it would probably be a good idea to experiment with that. Now let's go to our depth cuts. We're going to take this in two depth cuts. The first thing I want to do is find out just how deep it is. So in this box, I'm going to right click and I'm going to find a distance between two points. And I'm going to go from the bottom to the top of that wall. And it tells me that that full distance is 1.75. So I'm going to tell it that my step is going to be 0.9. Not going to worry about any finished cuts in the floor. We're just going to take the two cuts of 0.9. For my entry motion, I'm just going to do a helix. The helix radius, I want to make it a little bit smaller than the radius of the tool we're using. So I'll say 0.420. I'll start my helix from 50 thousandths above the surface we're going to machine and we'll do a two degree helix blending in. For my linking parameters, again I want to make sure I have that clearance so that I always retract to my full six inch distance. And I only want to use that clearance at the start and the end of the operation. I've got a retract height of a quarter inch, a feed plane of 0.1, the top of stock is going to be at the top of this face. The depth is going to be incrementally zero in relationship to the geometry that I picked. And I picked the bottom of the pocket. We're going to double check our planes. This should say bottom tilted front. And I think we're good to go. We're going to say OK. And there's our pocket. Now when we did the drilling, we had operations that shared the same plane but we told it to do different types of tool paths. This time I'm going to grab this tool path and copy it to use the other plane. So I'm going to grab this operation, copy it down, and we'll go into these parameters. Well, the first thing I want to change is my plane. You don't want to go reselect your geometry until you've reselected your plane. Otherwise, your geometry will have the wrong relationship. So here, I can just go to this list and tell it that I want the tilted back plane. And then I can tell it to copy that over here as well. So we have our plane selection. Now I'm going to go to my toolpath type where I can reselect my geometry. I'm going to unselect what's here and then select from a solid doing a loop. I'm going to grab this bottom edge. OK that. OK here. We already have our tool selected. We want to change our comment. Our cut parameters will be the same. Depth cuts will be the same. Entry motion will be the same. Our linking parameters, we want to double check that we have the correct top of stock that we're picking this face. And again, my plane should be set to bottom tilted back. OK this, 
and regenerate. So that's a way of copying a toolpath and then reassigning the plane and the geometry. So I flipped the part over to an isometric view, rotated it a little bit, and then ran all the operations in Verify. And this is what I have. Now also remember, when you're in Verify here, if you click on the stock, it will switch to a translucent view. Of course, you can also rotate it around to other views. So here I've flipped it over to a bottom view. And one thing you want to make sure is that when this drill goes through, that there isn't a little nick here that's still sticking out. And I can see that this is a nicely shaped oval, so that hole is going all the way through that surface. It looks like we have a good cut and a good fit for the entire part.